Welcome back to the channel guys, Joe at Colab Garage. We're here for the start of the season at Formula Drift 2024 here out in Long Beach, California. As you can see, we look quite a bit different than we did last year. We haven't posted a whole lot of stuff on our channel from the off season, but uh, the car has gone through quite the transformation. We have uh, highlighted some of that on Ryan's channel and some of the other uh, sponsors, so go check out their channels as well. But uh, just to give you a little bit of a highlight of what's changed on the car, obviously we have some new sponsors, uh, Sunoco Racing, Kenda, Extreme Sid Magic have uh, joined forces with us, a little bit of a change from last year. Uh, the car has front steer now instead of rear steer, which is something we struggled with last season with the uh, OEM steering rack being on the back side of the center line of the axle and the factory S13 rack, it uh, would shift back and forth and it would constantly change the toe settings. And uh, from what my understanding is, we get a lot better steering feel and a better Ackerman sweep uh, by putting the steering rack on the front side. So this is a V3 Wisefab kit and a BMW rack in the front. We also are on our new ST suspension dampers and we actually have engineering support with them this year so we can actually send data from the track with all of our position sensors, give them uh, travel and velocities, and then actually make significant, meaningful changes through valving of the shock, not just turning clicks. So uh, other than that, uh, we didn't change a whole lot. We also added sway bars. Uh, so now we have a lot better control over the chassis. It's just one more tuning thing. So last season, uh, if you go back and watch any of the videos, we were just happy to get the car out there and survive a weekend. Uh, we weren't able to make a whole lot of changes. We were just making the car reliable. Well, since we accomplished that goal, now we can go back and see what we can do to make the car go faster. Uh, we also were on the dyno. And uh, put about another 250 horsepower at lead line. Uh, we were shocked to find out that last year, Ryan was only competing with 600 horsepower and it explains a lot. If he made any mistake in the chase, he'd get left behind because we were so down on power that we couldn't make up the gap. So he had to be perfect. Now, uh, using our mainline dyno back at the shop, we were also able to uh, kind of just re-torque model the engine, give him a lot flatter torque curve, make it feel much more like a naturally aspirated car, and the power carries itself all the way out to red line. I don't think we're gonna use that much power here at Long Beach, don't really need it but uh, we have it on tap for next year and uh, we're looking forward to it. So right now we're just getting the car turned out for uh, practice. We're letting the first practice session go. It's a little bit colder than it's going to be in competition. So we just wanna let the track get dusted off, get the, the morning uh, jitters out, let the uh, other drivers feel out the track and then we'll be out there. So uh, next thing you see is some on track action. Something else I forgot to mention uh, now that we're back from a little bit of practice. Uh, our rig this year is freaking awesome. It is enormous. I will uh, do a little bit of a walkthrough here, but we have our side of the pit, which is 25 feet wide by 75 feet deep. And part of our partnership, we have Kenda doing their activation and kind of their hospitality area at the back of our pit. And then we also have extreme sim racing sim magic on this side and they are uh, starting to get set up they haven't set it up yet but we'll show some footage uh, there's going to be six simulator rigs in this side of the pit so we we think it's going to be pretty cool there's going to be tons of reasons for fans to come by and see what we're up to we'll be able to sit down in the simulator and kind of get taken for a test drive hang out there'll be video boards watching the live stream hospitality area on this side as well so 
If you're uh, planning on coming out to any of these events, uh, we got plenty of reasons for you to come see us. And we're also pitting with uh, Joel Berry on in our pit as well. They are still out practicing, but uh, they're going to be our teammates under the tent this year. We're looking forward to uh, working with them, sharing some uh, knowledge that we've learned and learning some stuff from them as well. So we look forward to it, and uh, we'll see you back out there. guys we just came off track for our, our practice session we got quite a few laps in got six laps in but um, unfortunately Long Beach has struck again for our team and we're not going to be able to continue competing in our uh, battle against uh, Diego uh, the car shut down in our last practice lap and uh, we got tapped in the rear. We thought we had a voltage issue, so we were changing the alternator and uh, fired the thing back up and realized we were only running on about half the engine. And uh, dove into the data just a little bit deeper and uh, noticed that uh, the back three cylinders weren't firing. And realized, you know, at that point we had no compression in those cylinders either. So uh, we pulled the plug on competition and the guys are pulling the car apart right now. So far, we found a broken camshaft on the intake cam. So, I mean, it's extremely disappointing, don't get me wrong. I mean, this is part of racing. I mean, stuff happens. This is why we have spare parts. We just don't have the time with uh, only having 15 minutes to be able to get out there and do it. So, I can't ask too much more of this engine. This engine lasted an entire season. We've said it in all of our other videos. It's made it longer than any engine that's uh, been in Ryan's car at this power level. So uh, can't be too mad at the fact that uh, we had that parts fair. It's just uh, very disappointing that it happened to us. The next day. All right, guys, we're back. Day two, uh, like we mentioned last night, we're out of the competition due to the intake camshaft breaking. So uh, I'll just kind of show you guys what happened here. We got, uh, this is not supposed to be that short. That looks more like a VR38 camshaft that we're used to dealing with in the GTR program. But uh, we lost four, five, and six, and half a three. So, not, uh, as we would say around here, that's less than ideal. Something else I want to do this year on the channel for our FD program is kind of sit down and interview all the guys on the team. And uh, well, first of all, right now we've had some issues with our our fans. They ran over the last full season, and basically where our radiator is in the back of the car, it gets packed full of rubber and tire debris. All kinds of stuff gets sucked up through, and the fans just get packed up with that. And you know, we've we've cleaned them out a few times, but it's just time for new. And uh, one of our, our partners, Durali, was here at the track and came to the rescue, gave us two new fans. So uh, Angel's working on that right now. You've probably seen him in some of our other videos, but I just want to sit down and talk to him. This is his first year in FD and his first year on a professional race team. So I just want to kind of get your perspective as to how, you know, what do you think? Well, first and foremost, it's, uh, 
the the pace is very fast, different from when you're taking your time building a car at the shop. Yeah, and it's even faster than look. We've done drag racing together already. Yeah. And this is a lot more. You got to go. You got to go, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, drag racing is kind of the same way during competition when you were bracket racing, right? But especially when the rounds are done in seven seconds or less than eight seconds for sure. Yeah. And they, they just keep going and going and going. Rather than here, it's it, it's very, very different. But yeah. I'd say the stuff we do drag racing is probably a little more grassroots, gentleman racing. And this is a much more professional environment where we have all these resources, all these sponsors that are here to help us yeah. be successful. Yeah, and I mean, you know, obviously you got to represent your sponsors and everything you do, there's cameras around. I mean, it's, you feel kind of like a superstar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you also got to put that aside and focus on the real thing here, and that's getting the car down the track. Exactly. So. Yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing the rest of the day today. We're going to get uh, the front of the car, get the camshaft fixed. It's just kind of maintenance things, because now with this monstrous rig that we have, I'll probably insert some B-roll of that, we can't bring the car back to the shop every single round. So when we're out, out of competition, and we got to get everything ready for the next round, then we have to service the car completely before we put it back in the box and go to the next city. It's kind of, I like to say a lot of times, it's kind of like we're a professional traveling uh, racing circus. Because you know, they set all this stuff up, and then we tear it all down and go to the next city. In two days. In two days. <laughs> and, and the thing is, it's like, just because we're out of the competition for this round, does that mean, all right, we have a day to chill and take a break and whatever, no. We still got to work on a car. We still got to get it back up and running. Because first and foremost, we still got to drive it onto the trailer. Yep. Right? We still got to drive it off the trailer. And we still got to figure out a way to get this car moving. Yes. And we don't have enough people to push that spool and do a 90 <laughs> on it. Yeah, I know. So. No, and, and mo I mean, the next round is unique because that's our hometown, it's Atlanta. But after that, when the next time we see the car, when we put it in the trailer, is the next race. So we have to get it all put together and check the whole car out because it's not coming back to collab every single time. Last year we had that luxury. Now with this big rig and, and, and working with uh, Joao's team as well, we just don't have that ability to do that. So we're having to do everything here trackside. Yeah, it's fun, it's fun. And then you, you, it's like you meet all of these people that have been doing it for such a long time. All these people that can, like, I don't know how many people have came here and just like talk to us about the new tire compound, talk to us about fuel, and it's just... We had ST it, suspension here yesterday yeah. talking to us about the dampers, so... Like the owner of Doral was here, right? Yep. And he was like, you know what, I'll get you fans here in an hour. Like... Yeah, you don't get that You anymore. don't get that the <laughs> drag strip. <laughs> no. Now, to a lot of people, I'll be honest, a lot of uh, people in the drag race side of our business are like, why are you doing FD? Why are you doing that? Well. It's because of this. We get access to all this stuff. We get to meet all these people in the industry. We get to meet with tire engineers, suspension engineers, fuel engineers, and we get to apply all that stuff to what we do with the R35s and the V10 program that we run, all the other DCT stuff. So it's, it's a great learning experience and it's a great networking experience for us. Plus, we think drifting's pretty cool. So all right. that's why we do it. It's awesome. Alright guys, so that's a wrap for Formula Drift Long wow. Beach. Just wanted to get Ryan in the video. So Hi. Tell us how you think the, the weekend went with the team. You know, we, we already had the disappointment on the track, but I think it's more important to talk about how we managed to pull all this off. So this was a huge undertaking in itself. Um, you know, it's basically champagne dreams on a beer budget, if we're gonna be completely forthcoming. Uh, it's still a large investment, but it's it's utilizing as much resource as possible. Seeing everything blown up, I wish that we didn't have another rig side by side so that we really could have encompassed to show you guys just how massive this 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 yeah. is of, of an undertaking. 
and using it out of one semi, you know, you got two teams, we got hospitality for a tire company, and we have a simulator activation on the other side, which would be a full length setup for most teams that are out here. I don't think there's another team out here that has a 75 by 25 foot awning paired with a 53 no. foot awning. On the no, if you look at the live no stream, way. by far, you, you couldn't miss where Extreme Racing Sim Magic booth was, that's for certain. It was a huge learning experience, but all in all, I mean, it really is an impressive feat that we were able to pull off, and it really is an amazing opportunity for a ground floor experience in knowing what we need to do in order to elevate yeah. for the future. It's the big boy. Yeah, this ain't fucking it's big around. boy stuff now. Yeah, it's big boy stuff. And yeah, so it's, it's this is the behind the scenes logistics part of racing that you know that a lot of fans just see the sexy part of the cars going around the track, but there is so much work that goes on behind the scenes to make all this happen. We have a team of 10 people out here right now just tearing this thing down. I'm super impressed. Our first tear down, two hours. That was amazing. That's awesome. That's amazing. That's amazing. So, That's amazing. We're looking forward to seeing you guys out in Atlanta. We got a little bit of work to do to uh, fix the car, but we'll be ready to go in uh, Atlanta in just a couple weeks. So with that, we'll see you guys on the next video.